Hey guys, it's Bill from Linden, Tennessee. I'm at work today on a Saturday. Came in, wanted to make some little parts up. But this is just pieces of 5 8 inch uh, flat bar, one and a half inch wide. I cut little one inch sections of it, drill and tap a 3 8 inch hole in the middle of it. What this is going to be for is battery box. I've shifted my focus away from the drive unit to hang in that rear battery box. Now how this is going to work, and I'll show you this in a little more detail here in a little while, but these little two inch wide by quarter inch flat bar, these are going to be stiffeners. They will go vertically on the sides of the box. And the box is just made of 16 gauge um, sheet metal on the outside. So it's kind of flimsy. So I don't want to weld this directly to that. So this is going to go from the top to the bottom and have some stitch welds along the sides of it. Just to give that some rigidity, gives this a little bit more something to weld to. And then what's going to happen from here, this will just be on, say this is the top. And then I'll make a little bracket from the bottom of the bed of the truck. And it'll come down and it'll just bolt right into there. And then the, the battery box will get slid up into it. And that's how it'll get held. And I think I'm just going to do uh, six of these, three on the front, three on the back. I think that'll be more than enough to hold it. So that's the plan. In case anybody's wondering, here's what I've been up to at work. This is the makings of a bandsaw, big old bandsaw. We used uh, trailer tires, 13 inch trailer tires. And there's a big old continuous loop of uh, basically like what if you've ever seen a where they cut meat, where they cut steaks or beef or whatever, the butchers use a big old bandsaw. This is kind of the same thing except for it's for cardboard, paper, plastic, whatever. The factory happens to be doing with it and all this stuff is uh, just made from raw materials this whole guard all that stuff we've got a jig that's clear over here to make that um to make that guard and basically you just have to you can kind of see the outline of it and you kind of kind of pick the right peg to lay one by one um, angle iron on it pick the right peg and then weld that all together then do that again, put some spacers between it, slide that whole thing out, bring it over onto the table and, you know, make sheet metal for it and, um, weld it all together. And that's what you're left with. And, um, but yeah, so this will have like a three horsepower or something like that motor on it. And it's basically terrifying. I wouldn't want to use it. It'll have a table, but anyway, uh, right. So, uh, that's where we're at. I'll see you in a bit. Well, we got these little guys a couple weeks ago, and man, I tell you what, they are the opposite of being productive. I don't know what it is about these stupid little things, but I just get a kick out of sitting here watching them. The cat seems to like it, too. She's been good, though. I mean, if she wanted to, she could jump over this little fence and help herself, but she doesn't, so that's good. But yeah, these little guys, they just jump around and they, they're just getting wing feathers now and i don't know they're just fun all right let's uh let's go do some actual work all righty back in the shop let's take a look now we're coming along with getting this battery box mounted this has been kind of a pain in the butt <laughs> not gonna lie but let's see if i can do this without turning it off but there we go. Let's get a light. Let's get a light. Yep. Two little mounts. These are the uh, oh yeah. Those are the little gizmos that I made. Got two more of them. I made six of these things, but I think I'm only going to use four to hold this battery box up. I think that'll be plenty. If the motor can be held up by three, then surely this can be held up by four. They weigh the same. So that's the plan. And I had the uh, the jack underneath of this thing. And the, getting this first one on was kind of a pain in the butt because obviously it's not supported, it's not level, it's not flat, it's not anything. But you just got to get it up there and kind of hold it in place and get it sort of where you want to. And once, once you get one mount made intact, then you can go ahead and make the other one and then you can uh, adjust the level from side to side 
And then once the side to side level is adjusted and the front to back level is close enough anyway, and then these two are tacked, then doing the back ones, uh, the side to side is already set. And now all the back ones do is just take care of the front to back level. And to get this jack out of the way, I just found myself a piece of quarter inch flat bar. And um, I hope this isn't upside down. It just occurred to me this might be upside down. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> um, yeah, it just got me a piece of flat bar. And just kind of holding it up. And it just turns out that that's exactly where it needs to be so that this thing's level. But uh, So next thing to do is... I know this is upside down now. Anyway, next thing to do is I got to make uh, the little brackets for right there. And that's what I'm going to do. This just takes a lot of time. Uh, I'm going to get my squats in for sure. Get my squats in for sure. And uh, it's just a whole bunch of get on the creeper, roll under with a piece, get your cardboard aided design piece on there. Then come back up, get a little piece of 16 gauge, make sure that fits all right. Come back up again, cut it out of eighth. Do a little bit of fine trimming, tack that one in place, make the second one, tack that one in place, take that off, weld it together, put it back in there, and tack it, and do the next one, and just rinse and repeat. But that's how it goes. Uh, one kind of cool thing that I've come up with, and I don't have a, a visual, but all this area up here in the front, I'm going to put my radiator there, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it tilted. Oh, I'm just going to have it tilted. I'll show you more detail later, but... I'm gonna have it tilted and it's gonna catch a little bit of airflow from underneath. And then the fan, it'll have a fan on there. So if it does get a little bit warm, I can kick the fan on. There's plenty of room in there for two. If it is later determined that I need to have two, then I will. But okay, I'm gonna go take care of the front ones and come hell or high water, I'm gonna have the battery box in there and held up um, on its own today. So, I will see you in a minute. All right. I need one of those little banners that comes up. It says, many hours later. Yeah, this is definitely more than a few minutes. Anywho, here are the front mounts. Still kind of hot. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd just kind of show them to you before I put them up. But uh, yeah, that's them. Um, one thing that I do when I set these things up is uh, like I'm using 3 8 bolts. So that is a 3 8 hole. So as I'm setting these up, there's no play in these holes. And if I can assemble them now and everything goes together, that's great. But if things got a little bit off, if something twisted or whatever, and it doesn't quite line up, I can always go in there with a, you know, a few sizes bigger, a couple, you know, 16th size drill bit, a little bit bigger. Um, so, but yeah, that's uh, that's how they look. So I'm gonna put them in now. All right, guys. I believe I've got it whooped. Everything's just tacked in place right now. Those rear, that's the rear mounts there, of course. And come around up here to the front. There they are. I'm going to, um, those little blocks there, those tap blocks, I'm going to hold off on ta uh, welding those in um, because I want to get the lid. I want to make the lid for this box. And I need to make sure that it's got room above and up. I'm, I'm pretty sure I can, I can get almost a finger in there. Uh, but it could it could come down a little bit, and that'd be just fine. But I'm, So I'm going to hold off on that. Actually, I'm going to hold off on finish welding all of it. <laughs> Until when, I don't know. Um, I guess until I drop this down and put it back up, and if it goes in as smoothly as I think it will, should, then, then that'll be that. Sort of the same with these up here. These are about ready to get welded in solid also. And I may have come up with a solution for this, <laughs> this situation, having to cut this DD on tube. Someone said, well, it's a shame you can't just have like a bolt-on drive shaft. And... I kind of smacked myself in the head and said, well, yeah, I totally can do that. Um, you can get Porsche stub axles or, um, yeah, stub axles that go into the drive unit and then Porsche either 930 or 
nine oh eight or something like that. CV joints bolt to that, and then you know the whole half shaft is going to be custom anyway. So if I can get a hold of some of those for pretty cheap, EV West has some for a lot of money. Uh, Felton over in the UK has some for about a third as much, and I've got another contact that I'm um, going to work with and see what they can do for me. But if I could do that, man, that'd be sweet. Then I would not have to cut this thing in half. I really don't want to do that. Um, yeah. As for the shocks and the down travel, um, what I will do, what I can do is I can take these shocks and then just mount them down lower. I can move this block back and then put this bracket sort of right here so that this shock comes and bolts right here. And that'll establish the lower limit of the shocks or the, the down travel. And then, like I said before, I can also get um, limit straps too. But anyway, this is pretty good. I thought I was going to be out here all night long doing this, but I'm glad I didn't do six of those mounts because I'm kind of over it for a little while. But they came out really nice, and uh, it's going to work just fine. Now, the reason that this thing is all offset, well, you can't tell, but I'm going to tell you it's offset to the driver's side. There's kind of a gap right here. Oh, let's go upside down. There's a gap. There's a big gap right there. What I'm going to do, that's the, um, that's where the fuel fill normally comes in. Um, usually on EV conversions, what you'll do is you'll use that fuel door as the location for the charge port. But this one is on the, on the passenger side, and that's really kind of awkward because... Well, first of all, it's on the other side of the car, so when you get out, you got to walk all the way around the car to plug it in. First world problems. But um, the other thing is I need to have a coolant reservoir back here somewhere for the drive unit. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a little aluminum or maybe a stainless coolant reservoir that just sort of fills this void right here. And I'll use that filler, the fuel tank filler, um, as a filler for the coolant reservoir. I think that'll work out really great. Because like I say, I'm going to have my fan and radiator back here. So I'll have the reservoir, the radiator, the pump going to the drive unit. And it'll just be a real simple little um, little loop. And I think that's going to work great. So, All right. Well, I'm going to call this a successful uh, couple few days. So, All right, guys. Well, uh, thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time.